Follow me over to Luke, and we're going to drop in at chapter number 15, and uh, we have a very familiar lesson, and I'm not going to keep you all long. I praise God for the teaching ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a time and place for everything, isn't it, y'all? Amen. Preaching will win the loss, but you got to teach them to keep them. I, I, I just said something right there, and y'all missed it. Amen. You, now you don't you done went out there and you preach. Amen. Now you got to teach them. Amen. You got to make disciples. That's what Jesus said. He said, amen. From now on, you are going to be fishers of men. Amen. And when you get them, you got to teach them. Hallelujah. That's how you keep them. You teach them. Amen. Each one reach one. Each one teach one. Luke chapter 15, uh, let's drop in at verse number 11 and reading through verse number 19. If you are able to stand for the reading of God's word, let's honor him. Amen. Amen. He's better than any judge. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse number 11 through verse number 19, reading from the King James Version. Here beginneth the reading of God's word, and you can read with me if you like. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Verse number 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. Where did he go, church? Into a far country. And what did he do? And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Verse number 14 says, and when he had spent all, somebody say all, when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Somebody say in want. Verse number 15 says, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Some might say feed swine. 16 says, and he would fain have filled. Now, I want you to understand that, amen, he, the, the Bible here is saying he would have. Come on. Uh, I heard Sister Shelia testifying that God blocked some things. In other words, if God hadn't have blocked it, she would have. I, I, I wish I had me a church, amen, or somebody that understands, amen, that God, amen, kept you from doing some things that you could have. Please understand, amen, he got close enough to begin to, he would have. Come on, I wish somebody would just stop and think about how God has stopped you from, I would have. I was thinking about it. I was planning it, but God blocked it. I would have cut somebody out, but God, I, I wish I, I wish I had a church in here today. See, I, I, I don't want y'all to miss this. What verse am I at? 16. That's what it's saying. If you, if you remove or, or just uh, take the word feign out, you can understand. He would fain have. It don't mean he ate it. It means he came close to it. He thought about it. Come on, I wish I'm, I'm in somebody's house. I know I've been there. I know I've been in some places I shouldn't have been. And I thought about it. And I almost did. But God. Verse number 16, we preaching already. And he would have, he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And watch this, God made it so that no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, I wish y'all read this. Come on, help me read verse number 17. And when he came to himself, he said, you got to open up your mouth. You got to say something. 
When he came to himself, I feel the Holy Ghost. He said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I'm out here perishing with hunger. You got to do something now. Now he said, verse number 18, I will arise. I wish y'all read it with me. Say it with me. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So says the scriptures and the word of the Lord is blessed by itself. You don't have to pray that the word be blessed. The word is blessed by itself. Hallelujah. It stands alone. It don't need no chaser. It's straight and no chaser. I want to preach from the subject disgrace to grace. And if you're writing it down, use the number two. Amen. Disgrace to grace. Now, I want you to, amen, just think about it. Because, see, this is real personal for me. And I'm, I'm going to start this, amen, with a testimony you done heard a hundred times, but it's mine. It's my testimony. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. God keeps adding to it, but it ain't going to change. Something about history, you can't change history. I'm saying something, y'all. You can't do nothing about history. Amen. You can't change his story. Guess what history is? My story, his story, her story. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody say history is his story. History is her story. From disgrace, I'm not going to keep y'all long. From disgrace to grace. Now, when I think about this, I know I was a disgrace to my mother. Amen. My mother, amen, bless her heart. Amen. She's alive and well. My mother prayed for me for years. I am my mother's only child, her only biological child. She has spiritual children and she has uh, children, amen, uh, 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 with her husband that came into their marriage and they've been married like 45, 46 years. So I'm my mother's only child, and all she had was a girl that was a disgrace. I, I wish I had somebody. Amen. They tell me, I used to hear it said, amen, that men can get away with much more than women can get away with. And what I'm saying here, amen, amen, you kind of look for a man to be walking the street drunk. Did you hear what I said? You kind of, amen, but when it is a woman, come on. When it's a woman, amen, that is an alcoholic, amen, out there cussing up, cussing out stop signs and, and you urinating on myself sometimes, amen, I was a disgrace. But the, come on, some of y'all was a disgrace too. But look at us now, we disgrace to grace. Now, I wish you would just take a moment, hey, and give God praise. Look at us now because of the grace of God because of the mercies of God God took me from being a disgrace to grace now open your mouth and say disgrace to grace and when you write it down write a number two disgrace to grace let me get in here amen this is a story that we call and we're very familiar we call it the story of the prodigal son Amen. A prodigal. Amen. A prodigal. Amen. And, and you know what? That's with a G. Prodigal, it means, when we define the word prodigal, it means reckless spending. Please understand, reckless spending, rather that's money or resources. Amen. Reckless spending. I begin to think about this, uh, Prophet Beverly. Amen. Some of us, amen, can be reckless at times. 
Amen. When you don't pay your tithes. Amen. You put all your money on your back. Amen. You're a prodigal. Because prodigal means reckless spending rather than be money or resources. The word prodigal, amen, also means wasteful. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I kind of found myself in the text. Hallelujah. Amen. Being wasteful is um, being a prodigal. And another way that the word prodigal is defined, Minister Jill, is wastefully extravagant. Wastefully extravagant. Amen. And when we, amen, look at this, some people, watch this now. I'm going to say some things this morning. Some people do not have the capacity to handle all that God has for them at one time. Please stay with me because capacity, amen, you can't pour in no more, amen, than, than what you have capacity for, amen. And sometimes God, the blessings of the Lord that he wants to pour on us, we really don't have the capacity to be able to handle, I wish I had somebody, amen. And sometimes, amen, God knows, amen, that he can't give us too much too fast. I wish I had a church here because I'm talking about capacity. And so, amen, it would be in the will of God to give you a little here and a little there because he knows if he gives it to you all at once, you won't be able to handle because you have only the capacity to handle a little bit. But what, what, what do we do? Amen. Instead of being in the perfect will of God, we get into the permissive will of God. And we say, God, I want it all now. Amen. And we begin to bug God and say, give me the blessings now. But God knows if I give you all of it now, I know what you're going to do. And so we keep bugging God. We keep asking, give it to me now. And God gives it to us because now we, are, we have moved out of the perfect will of God into the permissive will of God. And the thing that you asked for got you in trouble. Clap your hands and give God praise. Now, Pastor Gerald Graves he used to say, and I, I, I just paraphrase, he used to say, some people are $1.50 people. Y'all remember that? He said, if you give them a nickel over, if, if you're a $1.50 person, that's, that's, that's old Pastor Graves, y'all. He made it plain. He says, some of y'all is $1.50 people. And if, if somebody give you $1.55, you're going to lose your mind. Come on, y'all. We're talking about capacity. Amen. Listen, some people don't know how to handle positional power. I'm going somewhere this morning. Amen. Watch this. This word is going to Africa and all over the world. Amen. And it's just a few of us in here this morning. But the word is going out. Amen. And y'all receiving the word. Hallelujah. When we talk about capacity, amen, some people don't know how to handle position or power. Can I say it again? Some people don't know how to handle position or power. Amen. They preach one sermon, amen, and they become a monster. Now they're trying to tell everybody else how they should live and, and what they should do because you don't know how to handle, amen, when you have the spotlight, sometimes Amen. If things come too fast, uh, it can cause us to lose our footing. Come on. If we get too much, too quick, too much, too much of an overflow, some people don't know how to handle it and it derails them from their assignment. Can I say this? Everything that feels good to us is not always good for us. I'm going to go over here on this side. Everything that feels good to us is not always good for us. Oh, I wish I know I got me some witnesses in here. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Uh, it feels good sometimes to get a bunch of credit cards. Uh, I will never forget. Uh, 
Hallelujah. One of the saints, amen, testified that every time she turned around, amen, the Lord was blessing her with a credit card. Amen. Sometimes you got to examine, amen, where this blessing is coming from. Amen. Sometimes you got to recognize, amen, the enemy will set you up to fail. I wish I had a church here. Amen. Last time I seen her, bless her heart. Amen. All them credit cards. Amen. She had gotten so much debt. Hallelujah. But God made a way of escape for her. And what am I telling you today? Amen. You got to investigate. Is this real? Amen. Or is this fake? Is this a blessing? Are you a blessing? Are you a... I, I wish I had a church in here. Hallelujah. Remember that Satan is the father of all lies. And he will make you think something is a blessing. And later you find out it was a curse. Remember the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 22, here's how you know the Bible said the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he add no sorrow to it. Somebody bless the Lord right there. When it's a blessing of the Lord, it adds to your life. It don't take away from your life. It don't subtract but it adds, the blessings of the Lord make it rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Clap your hands uh, and give God praise. Now, hallelujah, while we emphasize the fact, amen, that this sun in our text, we're looking at the sun while we emphasize, Minister Eddie, while we emphasize the fact that this sun later, Later, somebody say later, while we emphasize the fact that this son later came to himself, Elder Shirley, we must unpack what caused him to fall from grace. Come on. Amen. We, we, we have a tendency to run straight to, amen, he came to himself. Amen. But we got to look in the middle. What caused him to fall from grace in the first place? Somebody say, in the first place. Mm. Uh, what we can see from this story, amen, this story shows us what some people do when they get too much too fast. And when they begin to be in the permissive will of God. I want to say that God knows that if you're not faithful, amen, over a few dollars. Come on. Some people say amen when I get my tax return. I, I wish I had a church in here. When, when, I, when, I, when I hit the lotto. Come on, somebody. Amen. When that train comes in, I'm going to bless the church. Guess what? If you're not faithful over the few little dollars you have, Amen. You're not going to be faithful over the plenty when it comes. Now, let's go to the text. Amen. We look at the text. Verses 11 and 12 says, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth unto me. Amen. This is kind of like a sense of ungratefulness. Amen. In, in modern day vernacular, it would be like him saying, I want what's mine and I want it now. It's very disrespectful because there's a time and a season for everything. And when we look at this story in the natural, please understand, amen, and see it in the realm of the spirit. Amen. How arrogant. Sometimes we can just be plain old arrogant. It's mine. I don't want to wait. Amen. Till, till I'm 18. I, I, it's mine. Like you earned it. You ain't earned nothing. Amen. Somebody say amen. And so the Bible says he's, he's a certain man had two sons and it was the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. Now the Bible refers to this prodigal as the younger son. 
And so we know that in age, chronologically, this son was younger. But can I tell you, sometimes younger is not always chronological age. I wish I had a church. I got a church. I said, I'm going to switch that up. I got a church right there. Younger, amen, is not always chronological age, but sometimes, hear me today, please stay with me. Younger can also mean your level of maturity. Come on. In other words, can you, are you mature enough to handle what God wants to pour out on your life? See, listen, let me tell you, amen, the anointing that's on my life, you may not be able to handle the warfare that comes up. I wish I, I, I come on, y'all. Amen, you got to be careful. Are you mature enough to handle the warfare that I got going on? I'm hearing Jesus and, and the disciples, I believe it was Peter saying, amen, I'm going to follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, foxes have holes. Amen. And I don't remember what the last part he said, but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. Are you sure you want to follow me? Horabasha. Sometimes younger is not chronological age, and sometimes younger deals with your level of maturity. Amen. Let me get scripture for you. And I want to tell you, you can be spiritually immature. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. It's possible to be spiritually immature. The Bible says in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 11, these words, when I was a child. Come on, somebody. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, come on, it means when I grew up, I understood things better. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Clap your hands and give God praise. Now watch this. I got to tell you, amen, the spiritually immature are easily tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. They're easily deceived because they lack maturity and discernment. Amen. It doesn't matter, amen, that you can quote a bunch of scriptures. Amen. Quoting it and not living it benefits nothing. Somebody say, Lord, grow me up in you. Hallelujah. The prodigal asked his father to give him his portion of goods. Now, under the law, Minister Jill, a certain amount was to be divided between the boys. When you go home and look at this again, we seem to focus on the younger. I'm not, I could go a lot of places with this, but for the sake of time, I'm not. But I want you to notice the word them. Amen. The younger was the one that asked for it. And when he asked, the Bible said he divided it among them. Amen. I'll just leave that right there. Amen. So under the law, a certain amount was to be divided between the boys, thus the word them. And watch this. And when the younger got his, he took his and left. Please stay with me. Because I'm coming out of this text. Amen. Because oftentimes when people get what they ask for, they leave. Ain't nobody saying nothing. God come by, you asking to heal your body. Amen. You get your healing and you leave. Amen. God bless you with a job. Hallelujah. That we pray for, you ask for. And God bless you with a job. Amen. And now they got you working on Sunday. You don't want to come to church. Amen. You get what you got. Amen. You ask God just like this prodigal son. Ask for what was my portion and God bless you and we don't see you no more. I wish I had a church here. Come on, because it see, ain't no new thing under the sun. Somebody say, ain't no new thing under the sun. 
Amen. When he got what he asked his father for, the Bible said he took what he got and he left. Don't be someone who gets somewhat blessed and leave before God is finished with you. I, I'm saying something there. Hallelujah. Don't be that person, amen, who gets somewhat blessed. See, God ain't even finished with you yet. But you done split the scene before God finishes. I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. But I'm seeing Jesus putting, amen, mud on the eyes of the blind man. See, you, you, you got a little bit of blessing, amen, and you thought that was it, and you done took that and left, amen, but you didn't get the full blessing. Come on, I, I, I'm seeing Jesus putting mud, spittle on the blind man's eyes, amen, and washing his eyes and asking him, can you see? He said, well, I can see a little bit. Come on, somebody. He said, I see men. I see their outline. I see, I can see their silhouette, but they look like trees. The Bible said that Jesus said, come here and gave him a second. See, some of y'all done left before you got the second touch. I wish I had a, I got a church in here. Come on, what God starts, he's going to finish. Come on. That man left, hallelujah, with his sight intact. Hallelujah. So don't be somebody who gets somewhat blessed and leave before God is finished with you. Now, this money, amen, the money that this younger asked for, this money was not something that he earned. And I want you to hear me in the spirit. I want you to follow me in the realm of the spirit. He's asking for something that he didn't earn. He did not earn this at all. And sometimes, amen, people have a mindset, you owe me something. Come on, you ain't doing me no favor come to church. Y'all miss what I'm saying. I want you here, but you ain't doing me no favor. Amen. You here to get what God has on your life. Amen. Move me out of the equation. What God has for us, it is for us. This is not money. Amen. That, 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 that this younger earned. Watch this. This money, this inheritance, it was freely given to him. Why? Because of his relationship to his father. Now, that's a place to give God praise. Come on, some of the blessings I get, I don't deserve them. I didn't earn them. Hallelujah. But God, who is rich in mercy and amazing in grace, he just put it on me because I'm his child. Some things you don't even have to pray for by default because of my relationship with the Father. Hallelujah. I'm next in line for a miracle. You ought to give God a praise right there. My father knows what I need before I ask him. The blessings of the Lord are following me. Surely grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Somebody ought to give, I'm blessing myself. Come on, some of these blessings, amen, it's just because I'm walking in God. The Bible said uh, he will withhold no good thing from them who, what, walk upright before him. Clap your hands. Korabasha. And give God praise. Give him praise. So I want you to understand as you see this in the spiritual realm, and the natural realm. This younger son didn't earn this. It was freely given to him because of his relationship to his father. Oh my God, that's a blessing right there, y'all. Some things I know I'm going to get because I'm my father's child. Come on, hallelujah. 
I know that he which shall come will come and will not tarry. I was listening to your testimonies today. Amen. All of us go through, uh, but guess what? We know that we win. Uh, we know that the word of God said, uh, all things work together for good uh, to them who love God uh, and to those who are the called uh, according to his purpose. Open up your mouth and say, I win. No matter what it looks like, how bad it gets, how bad it smells, I'm going to come out smelling like a rose. Hallelujah. His fall from grace did not begin on the journey. Please hear me. We like to think, amen, he took his money and he left, he left home and went into a far country. So that was a journey. The journey didn't fall. The journey, amen, uh, uh, did not, amen, how I want to say this. He didn't fall on the journey. That's it. See, you got to really investigate. He fell in the house. Mm-mm. 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 I wish I had more time than I don't. Amen. You can watch people falling in the house. Y'all not saying nothing. Amen. Backsliding don't start, amen, when you leave the church. Oh! But you can see people, amen, backsliding in the house. The younger, he, this, this thing didn't start on the road, amen, to this far country. It started with his attitude in the house. Y'all not saying nothing. I got, I, I don't want to keep you. I'm going to say it again. Backsliding begins in the house. Say that. Backsliding begins in the house. Somebody used to say, and I can't remember who it was, amen. Uh, we, we got our chairs sit up, set up a little different now, but you can see people moving from the front row, amen, all the way to the back row, amen, and, uh, and on their way out the door, amen. The fall started in the house, amen. The Bible said, amen. The Bible said that he took his journey into a far country. Amen. Again, it didn't start on his way there. And watch this. He, it, it wasn't, uh, uh, Minister Eddie, it's something to the, to, the, to the words, it was a far country. You know, he didn't go around the corner. Amen. He went far from home. He took his journey and he went to a far country country. Can I tell you, sin will take you further than you want to go? Come on, sin will take you further than you want to go and will cost you more than you can afford to pay. I wish I had a church here. Amen. And the Bible said, when he has spent all, somebody say all. I got to go. I got to leave out Amen. Some details, but amen. He spent all. Somebody say he spent all. Say all. Hallelujah. When he had spent all. Amen. When he had spent all. Glory to the Lamb of God. See, you need to understand that Satan never replenishes. Satan never puts back. He never, amen, replenishes. He just keeps taking. Come on, come on. Amen. He keeps using. He keeps abusing. He never puts anything back. Amen. The, the enemy, the thief, the Bible said, comes but for to steal, to kill, and to ultimately destroy you. And now, here he is, and I'm coming on in, y'all. Amen. He's out here. And the Bible said he began to be in want. Mm-hmm. Let's look at this. Korabasha, I feel your presence, God. He's out there now. He's way out there, but he's not off of God's radar. Come on, I got kids that are in a far country. I wish I had, we got to bring this thing to where we are. Amen. And, 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 and people, amen, will look at them and say they are lost. Amen. They too far from God, but they're not. Oh, I don't care what they are doing, 
Hallelujah. What kind of fentanyl? What kind of drug? What kind of alcohol? They in a far country, but they not too far from God. I always think about my children. And for that matter, I was in a far country. Don't forget where you came from. Hallelujah. It kind of balances things with our children. Amen. And, and, and allows us to have more long suffering with our children when we remember where God brought us from. Elder Shirley and I talk often. And I'm going to say this. I don't believe my kids did half of what I did. Y'all, come on. I can't look like Queen Sheba said, Minister Eddie, the half ain't been told. I can't even tell it all. Give me some. Let me take. I can't even tell. The half. I just tell you, I tell on it. Come on. I, some of my, I, I don't even want to come out of my mouth. The half ain't been told. Amen. That's why I really don't worry about my kids. Because they ain't done half of what I done. I done fell from grace and been backsliding a long time. Amen. I sat in the Marion County Jail for almost a year eating buck gravy. Amen. Eating bologna sandwiches. Korabasha. Hallelujah. I thank God. Amen. That I came from disgrace to grace. Somebody give God praise right there. Karabasha. And somebody open up your mouth and say, God is not finished with me yet. Mm. Mm. So watch this. I'm closing. This son, here he is out there. Amen. We got sons and daughters out there. Amen. They may seem to be doing well. Amen. I got a daughter. Amen. Doing real estate. Doing a whole lot. Doing her thing. Bless God. Amen. But outside of the kingdom, you home. I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it. But they coming, and we got to preach the truth. Come on into the kingdom. Come on into the ark of safety. You think you're being blessed right now. Let me tell you about the benefits that are in the kingdom. Oh, Sha. Now watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go, y'all. The Bible said he began to be in want. Now watch this. He's never experienced want in his whole life. You know, that's why people leave house. Amen. They leave the house because they don't know the blessings in the house. Amen. I heard it said like this. Sometimes you don't miss your water until the well runs dry. And see, look, you done left home and it's hard to get back. And the longer you stay away from the house, amen, the harder it's going to come, it's going to be for you to come back home. Watch this, y'all. We, we're exploring this whole thing. We're exploring this whole thing. I want to make it personal. Amen. See, when he, when he got ready to come back home, he came back home a different person. I used to tell my son, when you, you out there, I'm like, I don't know who you are. Can I just be real? I had to tell myself, I don't know who you are. And I don't live with strangers. Sometimes you, you got to love them. Come on and give them to the Lord. That's what my mother did with me. She prayed for me. Had me on her mind. And he took me from disgrace. To grace. Now you ought to bless God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. He's not finished with us. Now the Bible said he's out there and he began to be in want. And please understand he, he has never experienced want in all of his life. In his father's house he didn't have to want for nothing. Y'all please understand Amen. What's in the house, and that's what I want to tell somebody, what's in the house is always better than what's out there. 
Oh, my. My, my. Can I tell you something? Let me say this again, because I want you to get it. What's in the house? See, even though you don't see it, everything we need is in the house. Isha. And what's in the house is better than what's out there. Let, let me see if I can paint this picture. When I look at the ark that Noah built and how God instructed Noah to bring all of these. First he said, amen, bring yourself, bring your wife, bring your three sons and their wives and bring all these animals into the ark. Amen. And when you get everybody in, shut the door. There's no exhaust system. Ain't no air conditioner. Can't open up the windows. Animals are defecating all over the place. It was stinky in the ark. But it was safe in the ark. What was going on in the ark was better than what was going on outside of the ark. Somebody give God praise. And sometimes it get a little stinky in the church. Sometimes, amen, we begin to attack one another. But what's going on in the house is better than what's going on out there. Tell somebody to stay in the ship. That's Pastor Graves again. Clap your hands. And come on, what's going on is better in here. In here, God knows what I need. In here, I can get a blessing. In here, I can get delivered. I can get set free. Come on. Hopefully, there's love in the house. I'm getting ready to close. I want to say this. Listen, the only way back from a fall from grace is to recognize your condition and repent. So if you keep lying to yourself, see, this is what, this is what the church do. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Amen. People leave your church and scandalize your name. It got to be the leader's fault. Amen. Hallelujah. You just wanted to get out there. Amen. You don't have to find no excuse. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. You just took a fall. And so the only way to come back from a fall from grace is to take accountability for yourself and stop blaming somebody else. Come on. That's what it means about the prodigal son when it said he came to himself. See, listen, I used to go to Alcoholic Anonymous meetings. And the first thing they would tell you was to stand up, say your name, and say, I am an alcoholic. I wish I had a church here. Some of y'all went to NA meetings. Amen. And you had to stand up and, and confess. That's what you were doing. And if you think about it, the world understands that you got to open up your mouth and confess. Same thing in the church. Open your mouth up and confess. I am a sinner in need of saving. So the only way for this young man to come back from a fall from grace was to recognize where he was, to recognize his condition, and then to repent. And the Bible says in verse 17, and when he came to himself, he began to ask, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. He said, I will arise. I'm going to get up out of this. Come on, say, somebody say, rise, Sally, rise. Wipe your weeping eyes. Karabasha. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. See, the spirit of offense 
is, is heavy. Stay with me. I'm, I'm almost done. The spirit of offense is really heavy. The Bible lets us know we're going to always have offense. It's how you handle it. So this young man said, I'm going to get up from here. And I'm going to go to my father. Why? Because I offend him. Y'all got to understand, you got to go back to the one you, that you talked about. Uh-huh. I, I, I'm prophesying and preaching this morning. And I'm doing it in love. Amen. Sometimes you offend people. You blame, amen, people. And it was you. Amen. And you got to go back. This son went back to his father because he offended his father. Somebody open your mouth and say, go back home. Get things right. Put your big girl panties on. Big man draws. Forgive me if I'm wrong, y'all, for saying that. Amen. It takes a mature person to say, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother, but it's me. Go back home and say you're sorry. That's the only way. That's repentance. Repentance means to have a change of mind. What time is it? 20 to 2. We're doing all right. The Bible said he came to himself. He said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I'm out here perishing with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say, I will say unto my father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me, if you'll have me come back in, make me as one of thy hired servants. Watch this. I don't have to hold the same position I had when I left. Korobo Hoshia. Moses said it's better, amen, to be a, 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 a keeper on the door to, than to be in the house of, of a den of, oh, I can't, my scriptures are escaping me, amen, a den of thieves or something like that. He said, I don't have to, you don't have to restore me back to, amen, watch this, because this deals with sonship. Somebody say sonship. He took responsibility for his actions. He humbled himself and said, I don't even have to, you don't even have to restore me. Just let me in. Como shata. Just let me in. Make me as one of your hired servants because when I left, your servants was doing pretty good. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all want me to hurry up now? I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Can I fast forward? Amen. To the end, the Bible said, watch this. Now, please, this is the spirit. This is God. The Bible said, amen. We're here to two. Let them know. Somebody trying to come in. All right. The Bible said the father received his repentant son back. Understand that, parents. There was a, he was a different son, a changed son. He didn't come back arrogant. He left arrogant, but he came back humble. Woo! See, 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 life has a way of humbling you. And some of us, amen, have to go through some things, amen, for God to humble us. So he left it with plenty of pride and arrogance, but he came back. I, I just see him, you know, leaving arrogant, but coming back. Humble, apologetic, repentant. Daddy, if you'll let me, I, you don't even have to call me son no more. Just let me, let, just receive me as a servant. One of your hired servants. Somebody give God praise. And let me just give you these final, amen, symbolic things. The Bible said, and we're closing. 
that the father received his repentant son back. And I hope you saw yourself in the text today. I certainly saw myself, not only before conversion, amen, but some of the things that I've done after my salvation. Korabasha, amen. The son, amen, the father received his repentant son back. And watch this, the father told the servants, and you may have never heard it like this, but I'm going to give you some symbolism. He told the servants, son is back. Servants, put the best robe on him. Are you here? Uh -huh. It's with purpose, amen. Everything is with purpose in the word of God because, amen, when they draped him, not just a robe, but the best robe. Put the best robe on him. That robe signified grace. Come on. Grace covers. Surely goodness and mercy. Put the best robe on him. That was saying his grace is covering you. That is saying you are no longer a disgrace to our family. But grace. Put it on him. The best robe. Next, they said, put a ring on his hand. Come on. The ring signified, amen, a seal or a signet. And in other words, amen, I'm not only restoring you. See, when people, they, go, they coming back. You hear what I'm saying? They coming back to the house of God and we're going to receive them with love. We got a lot of prodigals out there that it's time for them to come back in the house and we got to be here when they come I wish I had a church I ain't mad at nobody you had to go out there and scar up your knees and hurt yourself and get your heart broken but when you come back to the house amen we're going to receive you we're going to love you oh I wish I had I'm closing. God's preparing us. We have to be here because they're coming finally. Amen. He said, put shoes on his feet. Three things. It's really four things. Put the best robe on him. Robe him up with grace. Put a ring on his hand. Put shoes on his feet. The shoes denote ownership. You got to see this. See, you asked for a portion, but when you came back, you owned it all. Y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. I feel God. That's why I don't get moved by these little numbers. Amen. Because God is mighty in this place and God is preparing us for overflow. Somebody shout overflow. Put shoes on his feet. The shoes denote ownership. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Slaves didn't wear shoes. And so, amen, he's asking his father, let me come back as a slave. Father said, now you a son. Come on, this is sonship. You a portion and you could have had it all. But when you come back, your owner. I'm done. One more thing. And that's it. Bring the fatted calf. Let's get ready to throw a party. Come on. Because that denotes that he's back in covenant with his father. Somebody give God praise. Back in relationship. See, some of y'all, amen, you, 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 you left the house and you don't know that you done broke your covenant. You've broken your relationship. Amen. That's what it means to be backslidden. Amen. God said, I'm married to the backslider, but how long is God going to wait on you? He said, my son who was dead was dead 
and is alive. I'm done. He said, my son was lost, but now he's found. Hallelujah. We fall down, but we get up. The altar is open for, us for anyone desiring prayer. And if you are out of covenant with God, if you have not received Christ, as Lord and Savior, let today be the day of your salvation. We fall down, but we get up.